Hi, this is Linda Duffy, the Program Coordinator for the Avalon Free Public Library. Today I'll be speaking with Jay Paterno, the author of Paterno Legacy, Enduring Lessons from the Life and Death of My Father. Good afternoon, Jay. Good, uh, good afternoon to you, Linda. It's good to be here. Well, I want to thank you for joining us. Now, Jay will be with us as part of our 2016 Summer Author Series, Thursday, July 28th. He'll be speaking in the school gym, the adjacent school gym, at 7 p.m. And he will be speaking about his Paterno Legacy book. Uh, Jay, I wanted to ask you, first of all, what would you like for people to know most about this book? Well, I think it's uh, it's a book that's about a very, very big and broad life. Uh, it's about much more than just the last couple months of my dad's life. And certainly um, the book reflects that. It's a it's a very honest and kind of unflinching look at reality, um, what it was like growing up in the house. I mean, there's some funny stories, some sad stories. There's things that uh, every family will go, oh, gee, you know, Joe, <laughs> not that much different than my own dad and made some of the same mistakes my father made. But I think most of all, it's a it's really a story about lessons that I learned from him over the course of my life. Uh, and lessons I think that are relevant to a lot of people as fathers or, or mothers or as in business. And so, so I think it's really a, it's a lot of things, but it, most of all, it, it relays what his life was all about. I saw you had some interesting pictures in there of the family. Are there any stories or pictures that really stand out most to you? Well, I think the, you know, some of the stories that stick out are, uh, Certainly childhood stories. You know, one of the opening stories in the book is a, I came home and I had complained about a teacher who had accused me of doing something that I didn't do. Um, you know, a friend of mine had played a prank on and I happened to laugh. And my dad was absolutely livid uh, at me, not as the teacher. And I contrast that with what I hear parents say about teachers now. You know, it's just one of those things. There are, there are stories like that 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 stick out in terms of he was really an old school dad. And I, I've kind of taken that on myself. and I'm sure my kids love that. Um, uh, there are other stories about how he handled minor disasters at the house when my mom wasn't around with us. That, that'll make people laugh. But I think those are some of the things that, that I think everybody will be able to relate to. It sounds like they will be able to. Do you feel the book's been well received? Have you gotten feedback to that? Yeah, you know, um, so far, you know, we went through four printings and then they went to a paperback edition that came out uh, just a couple of months ago, or I think back in the fall. But um, there's also been some interest in optioning it to make a movie. So, yeah, it's been it's been very well received. And I'm, I'm really happy that people have read it. And the feedback I've gotten from a lot of people is that uh, they were surprised because a lot of them thought it was just going to be this very romanticized uh my dad was the perfect father all the time every day 24 7 and what they saw was really an honest look at um what it was like ups downs good bad uh positives negatives obviously the positives great, greatly outweigh the negatives but um but uh, you know they you know and i'm pretty honest about myself i was far from the perfect son and uh, and i'm not afraid to admit that as well well i found it interesting when i read the book that you mentioned that all the decades that your dad was involved in coaching and really being a mentor and father to all the players. And then all of a sudden the scandal hits and in seven days, things just completely turn around. So I was wanting to ask you, one thing that stood out to me in the book was Sally Jenkins comments in the Washington Post that were published in 2012. And I know that really affected your family. And I also wanted to know, has Sally been in touch with anyone in the family since the truth came out? No, and um, you know it's that that's been kind of disappointing because I think the uh, you know the I've always had tremendous respect for her. I still do as a, as a as a journalist, a member of the media, um, as somebody who's always dug a little deeper. And so I expected that at some point she would kind of you know say, "Look, you know, my initial reaction, and and based on all the things that have come out about how inaccurate the free report are." I expect her, but you know, maybe she will, you know, I, you know, I'm, I still hold that hope that she'll, that she's willing to do that. And I would certainly love to talk to her about it, but you know, if it happens, it happens. If it's not, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. Well, I guess that's a good way to be. Uh, did you enjoy writing the Paterno legacy? Yeah. You know, it's one of those things that I think, um, you know, when I was, uh, when I first started out on the project, I was kind of, you know, it was one of those things that I wasn't sure how, where it was going to go, what it was going to look like. And as we, we started to, to work on it, 
and uh, and get things on you know going and, and understand how it was going to shape uh, what shape the book was going to take. Um, there were days when my wife would come down and I would be laughing out loud while I'm writing. And other days I she'd come home down and be crying. And I think she's trying to worry about my mental state because, uh, you know, it just doesn't seem to be something normal that you do. But um, but it was, you know, I, I think when my dad died, it was so very, very public. And um, because of all the things surrounding it, um, the news stories and things like that, I don't know that I really had a chance to really kind of sit down and deal with it. And so the book certainly gave me the chance to do that, both positively and negatively. So, yeah, it was a great, great experience writing the book. Yeah, it probably was, as you said, positive and negative. It really reinforced your childhood, et cetera, and all the great times you had with him, with him as the coach when you were with Penn State and also before that. So that interested me to read about that. Uh, so you mention in the book the epilogue is about Avalon, and I wondered if, did you have the vacation planned already to finish the book here, or was that just the timing? I mean, why Avalon? Well, just kind of the timing, you know, this, we've been coming to Avalon as a family for, she's, I want to say 1981, 82 was maybe the first year. No, no, I'm sorry. Back in the seventies. Uh, I think my dad finally, you know, bought a house there, I think 83, somewhere in that ballpark. So we've, we've been coming down there for decades. Um, and it's really our second home. It's, it's our home away from home. And, um, you know, I had not, uh, I went about seven, eight years where I hadn't been down there. And um, I regret it, obviously, but um, I came down to the summer before my dad died, obviously not knowing he was going to die in seven or eight months, and then came back down there to kind of finish up a couple of things. I wrote the, I wrote the epilogue there, um, had friends with me who read good chunks of the book down there. Um, and I think it was just it was just fitting. You know, Avalon has so many meanings, um, you know, in in our, you know, the King King Arthur legend, you know, that is where he's taken at the end of his life. Uh, that is where the, the sword Excalibur was forged that he, he carried in the battle. And my dad, every summer, lo really looked forward to getting down to Avalon. So, you know, when I come down, there's still a piece of him that's there. Um, so it's always going to be a part of my life. And I felt very, very, it felt to be very appropriate to kind of end the book on that, with that as the, as the name of the last chapter. Uh, I was just going to say, I definitely agree with that. And I know we're looking forward to seeing you here in Avalon July 20th. I can't wait. You know, it's one of those things I can never. I was just down there for two days a couple of weeks ago, and it was like, oh, I should be here for a month. <laughs> it is nice when the sun is out. We had quite a few weeks of rain, so hopefully you weren't here during that time. Oh, it was gorgeous when I was down there. Well, I read in your bio that you write for statecollege.com. Is that still happening? Yeah, I write something every two weeks, and it can be about anything I want. And so I go everywhere from politics to sports to uh, just personal observations. One day I wrote a one one uh, a couple of years ago I wrote a column, uh, basically just saying everything that I touched. I got up in the morning. Okay, I used the shower. You know where was the shower head made? Just kind of followed everything that I used during the course of the day and where it was made. Um, you know, so sometimes there's there are columns like that. Sometimes it's very very deep political columns and. Um, things like that. So I, I can write on a number of different things. I don't know if I write well on a number of different things, but I, they allow me to write on whatever I want. Um, but it's really a lot of fun to do it. Great. Well, I was wondering if you're planning any future books. Yeah, you know, the publisher has asked me to think about doing another book. Um, obviously, if, if the Paternal Legacy is something that goes down the road of becoming a uh, feature film that'll obviously take up some time that may push the next book off, but you know, we'll see what happens. But, um, yeah, there, there are definitely some other books in mind that I've, that I'm working on, but we'll see what happens. And, you know, the publishers very obviously they want something sooner than later. Um, so we'll see what happens, but you know, there, there's a lot of interesting topics as it relates to college football right now. I could write about it. They would be non paterno books. Um, it would be something, you know, something about, where college football is, where football is, it relates to some of the things that are going on. So, you know, we'll see what happens. Okay, so maybe you'll know a little bit more about that next month when we see. Yep. Okay, so before we say goodbye, I would like to know, what would you like readers to remember most about your father? Well, I think the most important thing is that this was a man who, whether it was coaching or as a father, as a husband, um, you know, he was certainly not perfect, and none of us are, but 
he always tried to do the right things. You know, he, if he made mistakes, it was because he believed he was doing the right things. And, and I think that's a great quality to have. And I think that's something that uh, in society today, we look at each other and we always assume the worst of each other. And it's very easy to do so. Um, and there was really nothing sinister in this man's character at all. And I think that's important. And I think the, the lessons that he gave to all of, to me, to co guys that he coached, to, to his children, to, to people he came in contact. So many people came to me that said, you know, I went to Penn State or I didn't even go to Penn State. I didn't even know your dad, but I remember hearing him say this. So I think there are all kinds of lessons that that certainly in the some of the turbulent times we are in right now as a society and politically, we would be well uh, it would it would do us well to 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 heed some of his lessons about togetherness, unity, working together, those kind of things. Great. Okay. Well, I wanted to thank you again for joining us and doing the interview today to promote your author lecture Thursday, July twenty eighth at seven p.m. in Avalon. Looking forward to it. Thanks.